Excuse me. Hello, it's Kentucky Cocktailer with a DVD review. Um, just got this in the mail today, just watched it an hour ago. Uh, it's all the way from England. Turn in your grave. If I can get closer here. Don't be afraid, it's just a movie. I mean, there's a, one of the top creatures slash zombies slash demons that's in the film. Um, Rob Eager, who's a, a fellow YouTuber, I think he was the first guy I ever subbed to on YouTube. He puts out these uh, analysis uh, critiques. He puts out critiques of uh, films looking for possible subliminal messages. Uh, I sh maybe shouldn't say subliminal message, but hidden subtext, themes of films. I think his review on The Thing, if it's still up on YouTube, he has problems with copyright claims just like anybody else. Uh, his, his analysis of The Thing is one of the best things I've seen on YouTube. Um, but he put out a movie. He put his money where his mouth is and made a feature-length film. I watched a bit of the, uh, there's a feature ad on here about a making of of the movie Turning Your Grave. And he said he's made a few shorts before, but this is his first full-length film. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's a, it's a darn good little movie. Um, I needed a bit of a pick-me-up today. I was just checking my uh, YouTube comments this morning. And uh, on one of my uh, spoof commentaries on Future Kills, somebody called me. Uh, they said, I think, you're a worthless cunt. Now, I can't argue with that logic, right? But I can't argue with their grammar. It's... You use your in as you're you're a worthless cunt. It's not while you are, it's while you apostrophe are. All right. If you're going to call me a cunt, do it grammatically correct. That's all I ask. Um, but this cheered me up. This film here, because if it would have been terrible, I wouldn't have done a review. I wasn't going to bash someone, a YouTuber trying to make a film. Um, I was was basically said, well, nice try. Another critic in throws himself into the arena to paraphrase, paraphrase uh, Teddy Roosevelt and fails, but he does a good job here. Um, the best way I can describe the, the concept of this, it's a zombie movie slash siege slash maybe a, a prison movie in a way. They're in a, a confined environment. Uh, it has a feel of like a uh, an hour and a half long, a feature length Twilight Zone episode. More more Outer Limits, if you know the difference between the feel of those two. Um, now that said, it's, it's a postmodern take on those kinds of uh, structures, in that you're not going to have a Rod Serling, uh, M. Night Shyamalan twist ending here. It doesn't even really follow a three act structure, or, and there's really no single narrative. There's, it starts out, you see these people in a, an abandoned warehouse. They wake up, and none of them know why they're there, no, even know really who they are, how they know one another, what the relationship is to one another. They know nothing. Through our uh, interactions with them as watching the story develop, we start to learn who these people are to an extent, but you never really fully know the whole story. You're supposed to help piece it together in some ways as far as why are they there, what happened, what is going on. In that way, it keeps you involved. Um, there are zombies in it, there are creatures in it. And the creature effects are okay. Right? It's a cheap budget. Basically, you can tell it's people wearing masks. What works, though, it's supposed to be sort of a dreamlike environment in that the people who are being attacked, the characters, can sort of sense, well, that's just someone with a mask on, right? So it sort of works in that way. There is a little, there is some gore involved, and the, the one gore scene, uh, I'm trying to get the character's name on here, I think it's, yeah, the, the actor Christopher Honey, he said he did his own makeup effect. It's pretty good. It's pretty good practical gore. Um, the effects, they don't take you out of the film because it works within this, the, 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 uh, the story structure. Um, the acting, Top notch. I was really surprised. I'm used. To, I guess I'm used to American independent films where the actors are awful, where they are the characters are stereotypes, 
where the lines are cliches, uh, where you hate every character. Here I didn't hate anyone, I didn't really like anyone either. I don't think you're supposed to like any of the characters, not to give away any of the plot really. Um, but uh, Mark Bolton plays sort of the leader guy. We, can, we know he's a leader, if you know anything about Rob Ager, he's big on symbols. So give the leader a camouflage jacket, right? Army, military connotations with that. His response, we wake up, let's organize, let's get weapons, here come zombies, they come to, let's, let's go kill them, right? I think that's a key point, part of it too. Um, Jennifer Moylan Taylor, who later on becomes maybe the key uh, actor in this, she's good. Uh, let's see, uh, Richie Nolan, I think he plays the character who is uh, uh, not crippled, but he walks around with crutches. Uh, Deborah Red, uh, Redcliffe, she's good as uh, one of the, the female characters. Uh, Bonnie Adair, Christopher Pablo, he plays a character and sort of says, oh, this is all a joke. You know, this somebody's taping this, we're in a reality show or something, or this is someone's long extended, you know, episode of Punked, right? Ashton Kutcher is going to walk in here in a minute or whatever. Um, and so no one really knows what what's going on in the story, and it's up to, you know, they're trying to figure it out, and you're working along with them. What the hell's going on here? What is this movie about? And all of a sudden, when they're trying to talk about why are we doing here, what's this place, why are there pick paintings everywhere? Is it, Rob Aker's big on symbols, there's symbols everywhere. If, it, if I had to critique that, I'd say there's too many signs, right? You, maybe you should minimize the amount of signs, because it would take, you know, four or five viewings to notice everything, right? There's a lot of complex stuff in here. Some of it you can tell, you know, the, the I, uh, S and snake signs, uh, paintings everywhere, drawings everywhere, of labyrinths. Uh, there's, all, there's a lot of stuff in here to digest, which helps also, uh, you know, that old saying, you know, don't tell, show, as far as filmmaking. There's no exposition here. You're supposed to figure it out by the images that are, you know, thrust on you. So acting good, story, as I said, it sort of it doesn't follow a three-act structure. It, it, if you're into those kind of formulaic, oh, here, here I can see what's coming at the end, you're going to be disappointed here. There's no cut and dry ending, all right? Um, as far as camera work, I was pleasantly surprised by that as well. No, no real shaky cam. What you worry about in these independent films, in order to offset the lack, lack of action, because... Anything where you have action scenes in a film, it's, it's, it costs money to do that kind of stuff. I have stuntmen, uh, you know, blanks for guns, squibs, all that stuff. That costs a lot of money. So what way to compensate for that? A lot of independent film films, so they make the camera do all the work. With the zoom in, zoom out, shaky stuff, all that. This, it's, it's very well shot. In fact, there are some exterior shots as the story progresses. This is one of the characters, I don't want to give away who is able to leave temporarily the confined environment that's being besieged by these zombies slash demons slash who, well, who knows what they are. You see these exterior shots uh, somewhere in England. I think I saw Liverpool on one of the bus uh, terminal signs. Or it's beautiful. It's well done. I was surprised by that as well. Uh, as I said, structure-wise, it... It, you have to, uh, it's not David Lynch dream world. It's not that, uh, you know, far off. What I was worried about actually before I even watched it was that, is this film going to be real pretentious? Is this going to be, you know, a film where, you know, it's so art house that, you know, you feel like, you, you know, I, I, I'm not grounded in any sense of reality here. But no, what he does, he takes a popular genre, the zombie genre, puts a twist on it, and adds all the symbols and stuff he wants. So you, you, you already get the best of both worlds in this, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, music score, there's a lot of heartbeat stuff, and there's at key moments you get a lot. It's, it's more uh, ambient sound. There's no, you know, John Carpenter didn't score this, so it's not, it, music costs money as well, as you know, so... It works. It's not anything that's going to either take you out of the movie. It's nothing you're really going to remember for a long time either, though. Uh, maybe it does some things subliminally. I don't know. Uh, Turn in Your Grave, a good movie. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, 
Rob Ager selling these. I bought my copy on eBay. Got it from all the way from England here a week for 14 bucks. All right. Uh, this is a movie that it looks like something you would see on sci-fi or chiller. The difference, there is an attempt at art here. There's an attempt at some, making something meaningful, making something important. And that's, that's the kind of independent filmmakers we should support. Right? Not someone just trying to cash in. Someone trying to use a popular genre and add some art into it. So if you have a chance, check out Turn Your Grave. A good film.